Hey Apple Friday, this week Dell leaked four upcoming generations of laptop chips, tandem OLED technologies, and many other things. There's a crazy iOS bug that kind of undeleted photos that people deleted a long time ago, and Google and OpenAI were fighting about AI. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. <music> This video was sponsored by Nebula. Starting the brief, Google this week announced the second update to Android 15. It comes with private spaces for Android users, which will allow them to create a separate, secure environment for sensitive apps and data, and also with theft detection lock, which works by recognizing the unusual motions that would indicate that somebody has yanked your phone out of your hand or of a table. And meanwhile, Wear OS 5 is now out in developer preview as well, and Samsung is rumored to bring its first 3 nanometer chip to its next watch, so Wear OS fans could be due for a really nice upgrade. And talking of Samsung, if you thought that Apple's crushing ad for the iPad was just bad, worry not, Samsung somehow made things even more cringe with a response ad. It has everything from a guitar that Samsung clearly crushed for this video, then the slogan that quote, creativity cannot be crushed, and even a Galaxy AI tagline at the end. Like, I'm pretty sure that people were at least partially angry at the Apple ad because it was suggesting that AI was crushing creativity. That just makes very little sense. And also in general, comeback videos like this are just so weak in my opinion. Anyway, moving on, Melinda French Gates has left the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and is taking $12.5 billion to continue her philanthropy elsewhere. Good for her, I guess, especially after all the uncomfortable revelations about Bill. And finally, for the brief, Aura updated its existing rings this week to offer insights into period length, temperature variation charts, cycle variability, and more. No doubt useful. And then moving on to our release monitor, we're starting with two new phones from Sony. The Xperia 10 Mark VI is a pretty forgettable mid-range model, while the One Mark VI is a very quirky flagship as usual. Apart from the usual spec bumps, the bigger news is a longer-reaching 85 to 170 mm optical zooming module. That is a 3.5x to 7.1x smooth zoom optically, which reaches further and claims to have better quality than the predecessor. In good-ish news, Sony increased the promised support window to 3 plus 1 years, which is still not great, but at least it's not bad anymore. Then in confusing news, Sony stepped back from a 4K display to a 1080p one, and in really bad news, the phone is not coming to the United States at all. That's sad. Anyway, moving on, Dyson has also released a $700 mop, or sorry, a wet floor cleaner, which is really a battery-powered mop that uses mechanical agitation by pulsing clean water onto rolling microfiber heads to clean up wet spills and dirt. That is cool, I guess? And definitely cool is our final release this week, which is Microsoft's new customizable controllers for Xbox gamers with disabilities called the Proteus Controller. It consists of small cubes that can be configured in a bunch of ways, including with interchangeable faceplates, and it seems like a really good idea. Okay, and for my first story of the week, we got the mother of all leaks potentially with a 311-page document from Dell. The publisher Video Cards got their hands on this document, which is from August 2023, and here are my highlights from them. First, we can see that LG will provide dual-layer tandem OLED panels for the next-generation Dell XPS laptops as soon as this year. You might remember that the new iPad Pro just launched with this technology, Honor had this in their phones even before that, and now we know that it's coming to laptops very soon with this crazy brightness and efficiency too. Next, Dell internally says that an XPS laptop's battery life will jump from 11 hours to 21.9 hours, almost doubling when they go from a 12th gen Intel chip to a Snapdragon one, at least in a video playback, which is just insane. And what I found even more surprising is that the cost of a Snapdragon X Plus chip is only $145, which is way lower than that of the Intel one at $293, and likely even lower than the cost of a flagship smartphone chip like the 8th gen 3. That was reported at around $200. I was honestly afraid that these Snapdragon chips might get really expensive, but at least the Plus model doesn't seem to be, and my fingers are crossed that the Elite will be somewhat reasonable as well. Anyway, moving on, we also learned that the next generation Snapdragon chip, called Orion V2, is launching in the second half of 2025, and given that Asus and Microsoft are both launching Snapdragon devices in just a few days, I guess that means we'll have to wait about a year and a half between the two generations. And then we're still not done, because Dell then also released Intel's four upcoming new laptop chip series, including the timeframes for their release windows, and these are the Lunar Lake, Arrow Lake, Panther Lake, and Nova Lake chips, which should come out roughly on a yearly case 
cadence, while Dell also suggests that a next-generation NVIDIA mobile GPU is coming in early 2025 as well. I think someone at Dell is clearly getting fired about this, but yeah, we got basically the whole pipeline for the next four years, except for maybe AMD chips. Okay, and for my second story of the week, a new update to iOS and iPadOS just launched with a pretty amazing new bug iOS 17 is now out in the wild and it started to undelete people's photos. A number of users have apparently posted that after updating, some of their long deleted photos appeared again, with one user saying that around 300 of their old photos, including revealing ones, appeared on an iPad that they wiped and sold to a friend. Yeesh! Apparently iOS beta testers have reported the bug for this version of the OS, but Apple didn't fix the bug in time, and the question now is what the hell is going on? If you didn't know, computers don't properly delete files from their memory when you delete them, they just stop indexing them, so unless those memory cells get overwritten by something new, you can still theoretically restore that data from before. So one theory is that that unindexing is somehow bugged, and another, I guess, is that maybe iCloud is restoring something from the cloud somehow? Anyway, at the time of recording this, Apple hasn't commented on the issue yet. But yeah, if you haven't updated to 17.5 yet, I recommend maybe holding off on it for now. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Google and OpenAI had a pretty major AI standoff this week. I think pretty unfairly, at least in the public opinion, OpenAI seems to have won it. You've probably already seen OpenAI's GPT-40 or Omni release, as clips on it were all over social media. It's a new and faster model that can answer with an average of 320 milliseconds, which is similar to human response time in a conversation. Plus, in the demo, it also offered very convincing emotions and inflections. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Of course, it's kind of impossible to miss that they intentionally made the demo sound like a very flirty Scarlett Johansson from the movie Her, and if that wasn't obvious enough, Sam Altman also confirmed that in a tweet. That is impressive, I guess, but have any of these people actually seen the movie Her? Like, this is clearly a dystopian movie where all the human connections are replaced with robots who can't possibly love us back, and in the end, everyone is lonely and only the corporations profit. Is this the future that they're painting for us? Anyway, the new update is rolling out now, including to Humane and potentially Rabbit soon as well, and that means you can maybe at least fall in love with them before their battery dies in like three seconds. So this stuff was all over my feed. Even my mom sent me clips of it, which means that it has truly reached the mainstream. It completely stole the thunder of Google, even though, in my opinion, what they announced was significantly more impressive and more important. Just to check my gut feel, I actually ran a poll, and while this is hardly scientific, way more people said that they heard more about the GPT than they did about Google's announcements at I.O. And that is despite, or I guess because of Google literally announcing a hundred new things that, in my opinion, will actually be used by way more people. To begin with, Google theoretically matched OpenAI's Sora with Vio, its own video generator, and they also say they matched OpenAI's multimodal technology with Project Astra, which can watch and understand everything it streams from your camera, but in my opinion, much more important than that is that every single Google product that you already use is getting massive AI features too. AI overviews are coming to Google Search by default in the US this week, which is potentially great or potentially terrifying if you're a publisher. Google's AI can now potentially eavesdrop on all your phone calls on Android to detect if a call is spam or scam, and you bet your ass that they're gonna try to use that for other things in the future too. And Gemini is getting included in Google Photos, Gmail, Docs, Drive, etc., and will be able to perform tasks in all of them like an agent. So one example is searching through your photos with complex natural language. Show me how Lucia's swimming has progressed. Here, Gemini goes beyond a simple search, recognizing different contexts, and photos packages it up all together in a summary. And another one is taking a photo of a product that you want to return and then letting Gemini figure the process out and manage it on your behalf like this. Now, Google's demos are often wildly optimistic, and I'm not sure that I'd trust an AI agent with half of the things that they've shown on screen, but the point is that Google, much like Apple and Microsoft, actually owns their ecosystem. They own the walls around your garden that you're living in, and so they can do things with their AI that somebody like OpenAI probably never could do, at least on their own. So this poll really should have been the other way around. Okay, to finish up, I have a question for you. Do you like watching the news like this, created carefully by a creator who hopefully thought a lot about it and sprinkled some analysis on top? If yes, then I have something for you. 
Nebula has recently launched Nebula News. It is a dedicated space inside Nebula to catch up with everything that is happening around the world with no distractions. The Friday checkout is a part of it. Morning Brew just joined, bringing all of their shows to Nebula. We have brand new news-focused original series like War Room. The team behind TLDR News is curating the whole thing, and it's just a fantastic way to stay up to date with news that you can actually trust and without getting bombarded by ads and unnecessary junk. Including this very ad, you could be watching the next Nebula News video already. What an amazing experience that would be. I really enjoy having a platform that only hosts smart and thoughtful content, and Nebula is of course our very own video streaming service built and owned by educational creators, including me, Wendover Productions, Polymatter, Real Engineering, and more. It is full of our regular videos beside just the news as well. There are many Nebula original series, and you can even get early access a lot of times with no ads and no tracking. Signing up really helps to support our work directly, and if you sign up with my link, which is also linked to down in the description, then you'll even get an extra discount. My link brings the cost down to just $30 a year. Mind you, that is for a full year, not a month, and if you don't like an ongoing subscription, you can instead also opt for a lifetime membership. Whichever works for you, so sign up with my link in the description, let's them know that I sent you, and it also gets you the discount, and I'll see you next Friday.